regreso aquí en Auto 060 eh, y vamos, uh, we're going to switch now to English because uh, we have El Heiser, uh, superintendent from State Farm Vehicle Research Facility in uh, Bloomington, Illinois. How are you, Earl? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you for uh, for ha for being here in our show. And um, you work for State Farm. Uh, can you describe a little bit your, your job and then like uh, the fascinating project you've been working on for a while with this 1968 Camaro? Yes, back in 2005, 2006, we saw the classic car market uh, go uphill, meaning we saw the values rising because we had a lot of uh, speculators and investors buying these cars. Yeah. Uh, and we realized at the time we insure a lot of these cars, and it would be good if we uh, had some in-house experts that could underwrite these vehicles, uh, help train agents to recognize these vehicles when they come into the agent's office. And the best way to do that was build some kind of training aid. And that's when we located a fire damaged 1968 Camaro RS convertible. Uh, and we originally wanted to build two cars to show a fully restored vehicle and yeah. a modified vehicle. Okay. And then you're dealing with storing two cars and moving two cars. So we decided to build both vehicles into one vehicle. Wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. I've seen the pictures and we have posted them in our Facebook page and uh And uh, we're going to keep sharing them with our audience. But uh, it, it's fascinating. I mean, so tell us a little bit about uh, the process. I mean, you obviously have a lot of uh, experience in doing this kind of thing. I mean, you've been involved with cars basically all your life, right? So from my, I, I'm reading from your bio. Absolutely. Me and the guys in my shop, we're just like any car lover. We've been around cars our entire life. We've built cars at home. We lived in that environment. We just happen to work for an insurance company now. Uh, but we do have this vehicle research facility that is fully equipped like a mechanical shop and a collision repair shop. So we have the paint booth, frame machine, all the equipment, and we did that entire car in-house with the, the guys that are in this shop. Uh, the one side's fully restored, so the yellow side, and I have a lot of experience there. So I did the yellow side, and I have <laughs> another individual that works in here, Tom Bergeron, who uh, did the red side. But we wanted the red side to uh, mimic what somebody would be doing at home in their garage. So I taught Tom how to do body work and paint. Yeah. Uh, and that side of the car is absolutely beautiful. And what most people don't understand is when they look at the photographs of the red side being built, we built it the way we got the car, meaning it was uh, poor workmanship. But we just wanted to show that even if we took a rust hole and filled it with filler, we can hide anything under paint. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the reason we're trying to show that is if somebody brings us a beautiful car and they want to insure it and it has a really high value and we ask for photographs of the build, I mean, there's a reason for that because we can hide anything under paint. I see. So that's like a very good uh, uh, um, thing for people to know about when they're getting into these kind of cars. I was recently at the Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance and there you see like the, 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 the jewels of this uh This segment of the industry, the classic cars. I mean, I think a Ferrari was sold for $27.5 million dollars in 1967 yeah. um, convertible there. And that's, that's pretty amazing. So that's one thing that people who are into older cars, like classic cars, have to look at, right? Like ask for all the information about the car, all the materials, everything, because uh, there's a lot that can be hidden, right? Absolutely. So even if uh, any of your listeners are looking at buying a car and it's, it's fully restored and painted, If I was looking for one, I would want to see the photographs of the build. That's more important to me than anything. Yeah, and the people who restore cars, I mean, they have a reputation. I mean, like, for, I mean, you are in the you are, you work for State Farm, but uh, I mean, if you were doing this as a private individual, your reputation will be online, right? So, I mean, basically, research the people who are selling the cars too. Absolutely, yeah. So, reputation plays a huge role in it. You know, the provenance that comes with the car. Uh, the person selling the car plays a role in it, who you're buying it from, where you're buying it from. You know, if it's not near your house and you can't look at it, you should hire somebody to look at that car. Uh, so there's a lot of things that go into that before you spend that kind of money on a car like that. Yeah, if this guy, I, I, I assume this guy is not for sale, but if these guys were for sale, what would be the value of this? It's, it's uh, obviously very unique. Yeah, it's very unique, and we did kick back and say, well, if we had to insure it, what would it cost to insure it? We believe it'd be in the 150 range. Yeah. Uh, and we say that because, and, and this is something I tell everybody, a car's not necessarily worth the sum of its parts or the labor or the expense to build it. It's worth what the market would pay for it. So 
in, in most instances, you are better off buying somebody else's car that they've already done because it would cost you a lot less than having to pay somebody to build the car. Yeah. And uh, so we were talking in, in theory uh, of about a car that is $150,000. How much will it cost to insure something like this? Well, I have one of my uh, collector car underwriters in the room here, Kent Schaefer, and I don't know if we can answer how much it would cost to insure a $150,000 car because there's a lot of things that play a role in that, but I'm going to let Kent answer that for a second the best he can. Okay, thank you. Yeah. As far as the value goes, the, the insurance premium is based on the, the actual value of the car that we agree upon. So with State Farm, you have a regular premium for a regular private passenger automobile, but if you insure a collector car, such as like a split Camaro or something of that nature there, the premium is going to be significantly less. But what we'll do is we'll work with the agents to get the uh, photographs of the vehicle and any other information they can give us about the vehicle, and then we'll use that to determine the, uh, the value and then uh, tie a premium into that as well. But it will be significantly less than what your regular premium would be. Okay. Yeah, because these cars are uh, not driven very much. I mean, and, and when they're on the roads, are like on their very controlled circumstances, basically going to shows, right? Uh, and so that, that comes into effect when uh, calculating the policy. Exactly. When, when, we, when we look at these collector cars like that, uh, we offer a significantly reduced premium uh, for these type of cars, and that's because we know that these are uh, people's investment or pride and joy, if you will. They take good care of these cars. They don't use them that much. Yeah, so it's not my, my teenager going out and like... Uh... <laughs> going crazy on the weekend <laughs> with it. Exactly. So th there's no that danger and, uh, when insuring the car. So, Errol, can you tell us a little bit more about the, what, what you do in your laboratory for State Farm? Because people think about uh, insurance companies and they just think about maybe office buildings and like people just working behind a computer calculating numbers, but uh, apparently you do much more than that. Absolutely. So our entire work day, we're in a shop. So if you walk into any collision repair shop in your area, that's what this looks like. Uh, and we have two certified ASC master mechanics on staff. Uh, I'm a collision repair specialist. I've also built custom cars over the years. I do custom painting. We have another guy with a similar background to me. We have another expert in composites, which carbon fiber, Kevlar, all these new exotic materials we're seeing. Uh, and we're basically doing hands-on research every day on things that impact our premium. Okay. And so the majority you of the time, we're working on new cars, not old cars. So the Camaro was a special treat for us. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure you enjoyed it a lot. So um, the car, uh, you said it took, like, what, four years, five years to, to be completed, that restoration? Yeah, just like any collector car you're working on by yourself, <laughs> it normally takes longer than it would if you worked on it every day. Because it we have never ends. Between. So we've got a little over three years tied up in that car, but it's not every day, all day work. Yeah, I know. And uh, so the car has been on a tour, and um, where is uh, where it's been and where it's going? Can you tell us, our audience, please, so they can uh, go and see it if they have the opportunity? Yeah, th this weekend, actually, it's at Disney. Disney's having their first ever Disney Dream Cars weekend uh, on Disney property. Uh, okay. It's a free show to attend. Uh, and in November, November 5th to the 8th, it will be at SEMA in Las Vegas. Excellent. Errol Heiser, uh, Superintendent of State Farm Vehicle Research Facility in Bloomington, Illinois. Thank you very much for your time and information. We have posted everything on our webpage. And uh, so for more information about State Farm, uh, the webpage is uh, statefarm.com, I guess, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again. And uh, congratulations on that fabulous uh, car. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bueno, ahí tienen información de la compañía State Farm, eh, un poco eh, algo extraño, diferente de lo que uno se podría pensar, de que es una compañía que simplemente se tiene empleados ahí detrás de computadoras calculando números. No, ahí tienen el eh, este taller, este laboratorio donde restauran autos, eh, los inspeccionan y ven todo lo que tiene que ver para que afecta a la póliza de seguro. Muchas gracias a DJ Cafa y en los controles. Esto ha sido Auto 060, una edición más aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Yo soy Javier Mota y los espero la próxima semana con más información sobre la industria de los autos.